We ask your presence to move in our midst. Come and meet with us this morning, Lord God, as we process. All we can ask today is, Lord, come. Lord, come. We love you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and have a seat. Thank you, worship team. My church. If you are new with us this morning, this is not a typical Sunday morning for us as a church. Um, how do you get through tragedy? That's the question. How is God good? These are the questions. As we uh, come together as a family this morning, uh, we're mourning the loss of a friend. Um, Friday morning on his way to work, Joe Nelson went to be with the Lord in a car accident. One second he was here, and the next second he was before Jesus. It's hard to understand how to walk through that, how to walk through the pain. Someone who I've known for the last 18 years, who has been such an important part of our family, a friend, how do we walk through it? So I know as a church, for many of you, we are mourning. I know there are others that mourn. I know Troy and Anna, our heart is with you as well. We just lost a close family friend as well this last week. How do we make sense of all of these things? How do we respond to all these things? I asked the Lord that question a lot this week. When I say this week, I mean it feels like a week. It's been maybe 24 or 48 hours. And you don't know how to respond to these things. You don't know how to, to walk through these things. Sometimes you don't know how to feel in the midst of these things. And this morning... We're going to put all else aside and just talk as a family and have time to pray and to seek God and try to figure out how you worship God even in the midst of these things. Last week, we've been talking about a, a transformed community as a church. I watched a transformed community in action the last two days, and I've been blown away. It's, uh, I, think about, um, I think about the Israelites building the temple and Moses saying, stop bringing so much stuff. <laughs> Thinking about the insanity of saying, no, don't come, don't bring anything. There's already so much. That's a transformed community in action. There will be needs. And they will go... It will be long-term, and we will rally with this family, and we will walk out life with them. Last week, I was reflecting because last week I preached on Romans 12, 13. It says, rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. And I asked God this week. Why? I mean, God, I always try to put into practice the message that I preach. <laughs> God, this isn't what I had in mind. But he prepares our hearts. And he prepares us to be his people, to be his light, to be his comfort. To cry. And last night, my wife Bethany was was with Tiffany, and one of the things she said is she said, you know, something tonight that I realize is sometimes just to sit and cry is enough. And that's what it's 
That's what the Word of God tells us, to weep with those who weep. And that's what we've been doing, and that's what we need to do for each other as well. And there will be times where we, we laugh or where we have memories. It, you, you can't think about Joe and not laugh a little bit. Like that stinker somehow found a way to get a cougar's flag in, in a church led by a guy who went to UW. Like what is happening <laughs> this morning? <laughs> I have so many mixed feelings. <laughs> You know, it's, you, you just, you don't know how you're going to feel. I want you to know this morning that's okay. That's okay if you don't know how you're going to feel. If you don't feel like crying, there's no guilt in that. Just allow yourself to be human, who God made you to be. As I was praying over the last um, 24 hours. God, what do we, how do we respond to this? What do we say? And um, There's not a lot of answers, but I, I was thinking about some things this, this morning and last night. I was thinking about um, the book of Ruth. If you don't know the story of Ruth... Uh, this is a family that experienced tragedy. And they, they walked through unimaginable things. They were in a, in a land that was not their own. They were away from family. And uh, there's a woman named Naomi. She had a couple of daughters-in-law, and her sons died. We don't know why. We don't know how. But we know that they were here, and then they were not. And you have a, a mother grieving, and you have two wives saying, now what? What do we do from here? And I begin to ask God, God, how, what do we do? And what I see in the book of Ruth is I see a woman in Naomi with nowhere to turn to say, it's time for me to go to my people. It's time for me to be with my people. That's what you're doing here today. You're with your people. You're with your community. And in the midst of a community, she didn't necessarily have the embrace that you had this morning. But as she went to her people, what we watch God do is restore something that seemed like it could never be restored. I watch God heal in the midst of this tragedy in, in her life. And we see God raise this widow, Ruth, up from the ashes and give her a hope and a future and a destiny that she could never have imagined that God might have for her. And I'm believing for that, for Tiffany. It's hard to see it today. It's hard to believe it. <laughs> but I know one thing is that faith is the assurance of things not seen. And that's what I can have today is just faith. Faith, God, this doesn't make sense. But God, I will have faith. And I will go to your word. I will go to your word. I will go to your voice, and I will turn to you and say, God, how do I respond next? How do I respond next? In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 and 9, it says, we are hard-pressed. On every side, does anyone feel hard-pressed today? It says, we're not crushed. It says, we're perplexed. Anyone perplexed? I am perplexed but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. We will walk through seasons of life where we're hard-pressed. We'll walk through times in which it feels like there is so much pressure around us. Pressure to say the right thing, to do the right thing. Pressure to, to figure out how we cope and respond with our own family, with, 
was close to us, we, 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 we feel there's a pressure within us from the big things to the little things. Pressure on how we, we, we support a family, pressure on how we love our family, things that seem like little things, pressure, feeling pressure when I'm driving and, and dealing with the fears and the things that go through our minds as we try to process. I feel hard-pressed. But I know because I have Jesus, I will not be crushed. I might feel crushed in spirit. I might feel crushed in heart. But God's word says that the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and he saves those who are crushed in spirit. And so I know he will save in this situation. I know that he will. It says that we're perplexed, but we're not in despair. And that is hard. Because if I'm honest, I've been both over the last 48 hours. Both perplexed and in despair. But despair doesn't rule us. And it can't rule us. We might have feelings of despair, but we have hope in Jesus. We have hope in what is to come. And there will come a day, God's word says, where he will wipe away every tear. And there will be no more pain. I wish selfishly that Joe was still here with a really bad knee that hurts a lot. He's in a, he's in a place with no pain. We'll all be in that place. And we experience this pain. We experience this pain, but there's not despair because we know the future. We know our future. We know how the story ends. For each one of us, we don't know when the story ends, but we know how the story ends. And so although we can be perplexed, I want to encourage you this morning, don't try to be this perfect little Christian to God. If you're perplexed, tell him. If you're just mad, cry out to him. If you don't know what to do, if you don't know how to feel, if you have a hundred questions, cry out to God and let him meet you in that place in which you question everything and let him show you that there is not despair because we have him. It says that we are persecuted but not abandoned. That persecution is it's like a, a hardship and you feel as though even the weight of this whole thing is, is closing in on you. And there are times in which the enemy begins to come and to speak into your life, into your mind, and it begins to say things to you. It begins to try to condemn you. Maybe on your life or what you've done or you, know, you question yourself, was I a good enough friend? And you begin to ask all these things and they, there's these, these attack that comes in that begins to... <laughs> this morning on the way in, I, I, I received a message of persecution, <laughs> totally unrelated. And you just go, why now? <laughs> why now? But I'm not abandoned. I am not abandoned. Our God is not an abandoning God. He is not an abandoning God. He will not leave us in our pain. And then it says we are struck down but not destroyed. This family will not be destroyed. They have been struck by unimaginable tragedy this week. <laughs> we all have. As I try to we grapple with these things and this, even just thinking about just walking this out, 
You know, I stop along the way and say, well, he was my friend. And we, we feel struck down. How do we recover? How do we walk through? We know that we are not destroyed. We know that in this world there will be trouble. But we can take heart because he has overcome the world. And boy, we need an overcomer. We need an overcomer in this time. We don't, we don't need a move pastor. <laughs> we don't need a get along with it. Er, <laughs> These aren't real words. <laughs> we don't need that. We don't need a God who says get over it. We don't need that. We need a, a God who says I overcome with you. I will rebuild. It doesn't all make sense. But God is, is with us. Lamentations 3, 21 through 24 says, Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. You ever talk to yourself? It's okay. You're not crazy. Er than anyone else. Would you say this? Will you, will you talk to yourself for a minute? I say to myself, we just tell yourself this morning, the Lord is my portion. It's all right that half of you didn't even believe that. Just tell yourself again, the Lord is my portion. You see, sometimes when we say these things, it's not necessarily a statement of belief or a statement of feeling, it's a statement of faith. When I don't feel like it, when I don't know if I can believe it, I can speak in faith and say, the Lord is my portion. He was my portion. He is my portion. He will be my portion. Whether I feel that right now in this time or not, the Lord is my portion. Hmm. <laughs> I don't have much to say. And that's okay. Because the truth is there's not a lot to say. There's lots of questions. There's big questions. There's detailed questions. I probably don't have answers to any of those detailed questions. Pastor Matt will come talk to us about that as we close this morning. Um... You know, there's nothing normal about today. And you may, you may say, you know, I, I didn't know. I didn't know Joe. I didn't know the Nelsons. But you're part of this family. And we know that when one part hurts, the rest of the body hurts with it. We know that's what God's Word says. And so maybe your role today isn't so much to mourn. But maybe your role today is to hug. Maybe your role today is to pray for someone who is. That's what a church does. That's what a family is. Is that we can extend love to one another. And church, there will be a time in which we will surround this family. I've been very intentional this weekend at to ask for space because that's what's been needed. But there will be a time and we will let you know when that time is and there will be a time in which to continue to surround them with love, with practical, with all of those things. I get back to this thought 
I just it's gone over and over in my head on Friday afternoon I went for a walk I just needed some space and began to talk to the Lord and I just sensed the Lord asking me a question Brad do you believe that I'm still good? I can tell you what my flesh wanted to say. But it's a good thing that I live my life with a redeemed spirit. <laughs> that I don't live by the flesh. And I know that God is good. His word says it. His word says the Lord is good. Not just the Lord is good when he blesses me. Not just the Lord is good when I got a check in the mail for a thousand bucks that I wasn't expecting. Not just the Lord is good, I got a promotion. Not just the Lord is good, look at this beautiful new baby. Nahum 1.7 says the Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. He knows those who take refuge in him. He knows. Somehow, in the midst of it, we, we maintain that the Lord is good. I know that the Lord is good. We will always have questions doesn't always make sense. Please, if that's how you feel, tell him. But don't lose him. Because he's not losing you. He's not leaving you. You scream and yell and cry out, whatever. Find a place to do that. Maybe don't scare anybody here this morning. If you need to, then that's fine, I guess. Take, find a place. Go for a walk. Talk with the Lord. You will find that He is still good. Even when it doesn't make sense. That's how we continue to get through. And I, I, I want to just close with this, this scripture. And really, this morning, really all I can say is just the Word of God. Because I can hold to this truth. I can hold to this truth that I know the Lord is good. That I don't, that I still see evil in this world. I still see pain in this world. I still see hardship in this world. But God is good. He is good. And, and I want to just read you out of Psalm 27. And you might want to just hmm, keep this in your mind this week. Psalm 27. It says, I will remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Gosh, that's where we're at. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. I don't think it's by mistake that wait for the Lord is written here twice. We just wait for you, God. We wait for you to bring that healing. We wait for you to come and to speak into this tragedy, into this life. We wait for you. Man, I get so far out ahead of, of wanting answers to questions so much. I get out there, I, have questions. I want to fix everything. I want to have everything answered. But twice he says, wait for the Lord. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for the Lord and I'm going to remain confident that we will see the goodness of God. I'll be honest with you, I don't know how we'll see the goodness of God, but I know we will. I know that we will. It's not going to look like the goodness that I wanted it to look like, but it, there will be goodness of God. I promise you this. 
that we will see the goodness of God. And he will bring us through. I think our only response this morning is to turn to his goodness, to turn to him, to turn to his comfort, to turn to, to his face. And so I've asked the worship team just to come and lead us this morning as we respond. There's not a right response or a wrong response, church. This is a time as a family where we get to come together. As, as we have focused and we've supported the family, and, and I know some of the family is even here this morning, and we just ask that you, um, but you love, but also be giving of space at the same time. Because believe me, this is, this is hard. This is unimaginable for what they're walking through right now. But we need each other, and we need a space to be able to mourn, and a space to be able to just pray together. Don't try to make sense of it. Don't try to make sense. It's maybe the most spiritual thing you could do is to tell your brain to just shut up. I've done that a lot. And just say, okay. God, will you come meet me? Will you come and with that peace that you promised that surpasses understanding? That's what I need. I need peace that goes beyond understanding. God will bring it. We wait on him. So let's let's go to the Lord this morning. Here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going we're gonna to worship together. Our pastors are, are ready and willing to pray with you. We'll just be on the sides and the fronts and wherever. Just find someone. If you want a hug, you want to cry, you want someone to pray with you, we are here for that. Um, and, and nothing else about this is, this is, this isn't normal. Service isn't normal, but this isn't normal. So um, Pastor Matt will come up at the end to give us some instructions and some things. I know that some people have asked, how do we support the family? We're not passing a tithe bucket around this morning. Um, we will have ushers at the door if you want to give, but also we, you can give if you designate Nelson. Um, we have a fund set up also here at the church. If you want to give in that way, you're welcome to do that as well. And uh, Pastor Matt will, will walk us through that. So do you stand with me this morning and let's just turn to God in this time. Lord, we come before you this morning. We hang on to you. We hang on to you. And we know that you are good. I even bring to mind right now, it doesn't seem to be like the right fit, but I just, church, I'm thinking about this story of the woman who was, who was pressing through the crowds because she, she had that issue of blood and she was, she was bleeding and she couldn't, she couldn't be healed and restored from it and there was this healing that needed and she knew if I can just even touch his, the edge of his robe, I know that there will be healing. And so this morning, church, we just reach out to say, God, if I could just even get a, a, a glimpse of your heart, if I could just grasp a hold of you, Lord God, will you meet me in this place today? Would you meet me in this place today? I need to see your goodness today, God. I need to see your goodness, God. I need to see that you are my portion. Jesus, we love you. You love us unwavering, and we love you. And you are all we got to turn to. I ask, Holy Spirit, that you would come in your presence of peace in this place today that you would be with us. I pray right now for Tiffany. Surround her with your love. Surround her, Lord God. Oh God. Surround her with your presence. Pray for Riley this morning. questions, Lord God. 
that are going through her head, Lord God, I pray that you would grab a hold of her and hold her tightly. Pray for Paige this morning, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for this girl who you have an amazing hope and future for. Silence the voice of the enemy in this moment, Lord. Speak life into her, Lord Jesus. Bring your comfort to her. May your love abound. Pray for Bryn this morning. She is such a doer. <laughs> As I've watched her serve her family, and but I pray that she would have a moment to sit at your feet, Jesus. That you administer to her heart today. Pray for Joey. <laughs> See him as an oak of righteousness strong tower but today without strength we know that in your weakness in our weakness we are strong through you so give him strength in his heart today I pray right now today God that you would take the pressure off of him Pray for Levi today, God. Thank you for this sweet little boy, Lord. Let's pray for bear hugs for him. (laughs) Pray, Lord God, that you would... He would just experience the touch of your love today. pray, Lord God, that you would just the innocence that is within him, Lord God, that you preserve that. Pray for Ian. I've watched his heart break, Lord. So many questions in this little one. Lord, I pray that you comfort to him. I, I, I pray for distraction for him as well. Pray, Lord God, that you would just come and meet him where he's at, God. And I pray that you would give Tiffany the wisdom and the strength to lead her family in this time. Pray for best friends and those who in the trenches. I pray, Lord God, that you would care for them, for their families, and for their hearts as well. Fill us up, Lord God, so that we can pour out and be a blessing. We turn to you now in this time, God, and we declare you are good. Even when it's hard, we will praise you. (laughs) 